so I wanted to make a uh, recording really quick on designing a um, a linkage uh, for opening and closing uh, this box or just a theoretic one. I'm not going to make it like a actual functional one, but I wanted to show some of what I learned just recently about designing linkages uh, um, in general. So the before I get to the box, I wanted to show some of the concepts. So if I pull out a couple of lines in a sketch um, for the, this will be my four bar linkage. Um, let's see, and to make it work the way I want, which is a crank rocker configuration, I'm going to fix these two points in space, and then I'm going to start adding dimensions to the lines so that I can uh, drive uh, these sketch lines. Let's see, so pull that out, we'll make this one a little bit longer, and make this one 80. So, and with all these dimensioned out right now, I should be able to grab this, oh, hold on, 60, there we go. I should be able to grab this and rotate it around in a crank rocker configuration. So, and this is called a crank rocker because this linkage acts as a crank, is rotating fully, and then this linkage, uh, uh, acts as a rocker so it rocks back and forth across a specific arc um, and then this linkage in the middle is called a coupler um, you have to be you have to be careful about the uh, dimensions there's a there's a concept called Grashoff's Grashoff's law um, that uh, that says the that says the uh, the shortest and the sum of the shortest and longest length links in uh, in this four bar system needs to be less than or equal to the sum of the remaining two links otherwise you get locked up um, and there there are different configurations you could do uh, depending on like which bars are um, are connected in which uh, which way so that instead of a crank rocker you get like a double crank and all that kind of stuff um, but right now what I want is uh, is this crank rocker um, so before we switch over to the box another thing that I think is really helpful for visualization is to look at the actual circles that this uh, that is happening across. So this, uh, the crank arm is operating across, uh, along uh, the, the circumference of one circle and then the rocker is, uh, is operating along an angle on the other. So now, now that you can see these, we can see that as we turn on one circle, we get a, the rocking across the angle of another circle. So, and then as we go through and make changes to the um, the diameter, or I mean, I guess in this case, the radius of uh, of either of those circles, we get different actions, either different size sizes of um, like different lengths that the that the rocking happens across or rocking across different parts of the circle but either way you can control all these uh by by the position length and then kind of analyzing the circles that you're operating across so all of that said if we hop back to our box let me close the box i want i want to do a new sketch on the side of the box and I'm going to project the base and the lid. So we have those dimensions. Like if we hide those, we have these sketch dimensions. Um, oh, make sure that I get those. Okay. So we've got those sketch dimensions. So that's one position. Um, we know that we want our box to uh, the lid to open all the way. So let me let me sketch out an example of what the box would be shaped like if it was open so make that the same make that the same so if the, if the lid was open on this pivot point it would be positioned like that and I'm going to do one more um, I'm going to do what if the box was halfway open so let's get you right here Those points. Alright, close that up. 
we'll make this rectangle. Set that in place. Make sure it's the same size as the other two. And then let's put it at the pivot point and make sure that it is at a going for 45 but really it doesn't matter what angle it's at i just want it to be kind of like you know halfway through the opening so so now we uh so now we can start thinking about where we're going to start putting stuff um so we know that we need the crank portion of our linkage we know that we need a coupler for our linkage and actually we don't need the the rocker arm necessarily like we're gonna draw a fake one out and let me go ahead and draw a fake one out and i'm gonna make that one a construction point um but we don't really need it because the actual rocker is the lid itself so what we want to do is find uh like pick a mounting point for the lid um i'm just going to do it um halfway through i'm gonna put a point you know, bisect the the lid and then put a point in the middle of that bisection um, and because it's in the midpoint of the lid I know that for each of these I could do the same thing and it will be in the exact same spot because I could have drawn all the lines and then and then put all the points on at the same time but Whatever. Cool. So we got the, the lid in three different positions. We got the same point mark. And actually, we can go through and add that circle. And we see all three of those points line up along the circle. And because we want, because the lid is the rocker arm, I'm going to put this fake one on here. And I'm not going to attach it to any particular point so that we can move it along the circumference of the circle and see that it does indeed hit each of those points. So now we got that in place. Um, so now I'm gonna pick just a random spot. This point here would be wherever we were going to mount our, uh, like our servo or our stepper motor, whatever's going to actually be driving this crank arm. Um, and now, now we could just start sizing stuff out. So I, I'm going to place the dot really close to where the open position is. I don't want to put it right on there because Fusion will just snap them together. I still want to be able to move it. But I know that whenever it's open, I want the, I want the lid to be in this position. Um, I know that whenever it's open, I mean, I want the servo horn to be right about there. Um, at the moment, I'm not trying to be exact. So now I could start saying, the servo horn is going to be 20 millimeters. Um, the uh, the rocker arm, the position is already set, and now I don't even need to to calculate the the uh, coupler necessarily. I'll just pull out a dimension and let it be what it's going to be. And now we can see that the servo, whenever the horn is down here, it'll be closed. Whenever the horn is up here, it will be open. So, and like the, and whether, whether or not you, or the, the like the dimensions that we, you want to use will probably have to do with the, the size and weight of the actual lid and the amount of torque that your step, or your servo or your stepper motor has, um, and like uh, different, different factors like that. But to get, just to get a demonstration of a functional rocker arm, this is, uh, this is perfectly fine. So now that we have all that, the next thing to do is to make the uh, make the actual arms. Yeah, you know, buckle that in so that everything is uh, fully dimensioned. And I'm going to use the center to center slot tool to come through here and make some linkages. Oh wait a minute, turn off construction. My center to center tool again. Maybe 10 millimeters. 
millimeters. So we got our crank, we got our coupler, and then we don't need the we don't need the rocker because the rocker is lid. So now we can start extruding those arms. So I'm gonna pull this one out two millimeters. I have my sketch back. And I'm going to pull this arm out. And, and pull that one out two millimeters as well, but don't want them to be on the same plane, so I'm going to start from the top of that and then pull it out to more millimeters. Actually, I made a mistake. Let's see. I'm gonna make that one a component. Pull this one coupler. Actually, gotta go back. Ah, it's not gonna let me do that. Just make. Okay, so I got my component. Or, uh, coupler, my crank. Got my base. Got my lid. Hide all the sketches. So now I've got all those pieces. And with all of them sketched in place, uh, and really, I should have done this on the inside, but I'm not really worried about it. I can start joining stuff and adding those revolutes. So I'm going to join these two pieces. And I'm going to put the revolute joint right here, which looks weird, but it's all good. Do these two pieces and put the revolute joint here. And then I will join these two pieces and put the revolute joint here. In reality, I would need a I'd need a spacer up here because if we look at it to the side, it's not actually touching, but this is all just uh, theoretic at the moment. And now because the base is already grounded um, and the, there's a revly joint already on the hinge. Whenever I open this, there we go. Got our lid open, and I got our lid closed. And if I pop that sketch back up, let's get right on the side. You can see we got the open position. Got lid way through. And we got it completely open. So pretty cool. So and now that now that I've got this down, uh, like I, I think that one of the things I'm gonna do is we have a couple of treasure chests at home that I wanted to do this opening and closing of like a like year years ago literally that I couldn't figure out how to do just because I didn't know how to design this uh, like the um, this rocker arm in reality. But now that I know how to do it. I can get some like uh, hinges on the back and put the get a servo in the middle, design all this on the inside, get some mounting points, and we can automate our opening and closing of the treasure chest. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it.